What's going on guys? Today we're going to talk about standard deviations on the SAT. So these questions are very easy to spot on the SAT, but they're not very easy to solve. You're going to see questions like standard deviations mentioned in the question, or talk about standard deviation. Is it larger or are they the same? Or is it impossible to calculate from the information given above over here? Quick tip, usually never the answer. And you're also going to see questions that look something like this, where it gives you two data plots that look something like this. And based on the information, you have to find out whether standard deviations are the same, less than, greater than, or they're just flat out different. So the thing about standard deviation on the SAT is you don't need to calculate what the exact value of standard deviation is. Rather, all you need to do is estimate whether the standard, whether the standard deviation is going to be low, high, or going to be the same, or just going to be different. And how you can estimate the standard deviation is exactly what you're going to learn in this video. By the end of this video, you're going to know how to solve all four of these questions. So if you're ready to get started, excited to raise your score and score higher on your next SAT, smash the like button and let's get started with today's video. So as I mentioned, all you need to know how to do on the SAT is estimating standard deviation. And how do you estimate the standard deviation? Well, it's all about understanding the concept about standard deviation. More importantly, you want to understand the definition of the standard deviation. And what is the definition? Well, standard deviation is just simply referring to how spread out the data points are. How spread out the data points are. That is what standard deviation is. It all depends on how much it's spread out. Okay? So if it's spread out a lot, that means your standard deviation is going to be very high. But if it's not very spread out, then your standard deviation is also going to be low as well. In other words, it's essentially referring to the degree of variation in your data points. Okay. And if this is confusing right now, don't worry, it's going to make more sense as we go through a couple of examples. And what do I mean by how spread out these data points are, right? Well, let me give you a couple of examples. We have two data sets, A over here and B over here. And for data set A, we see that a lot of these data points are clumped around two. They're not very spread out. They are centered around a specific value. However, for data set B, okay, there is some clump right there. They're kind of centered towards two as well, but we also have a decent number of points that are also away from this peak or clump right there. And by looking at all of these data points, we can tell that, oh, for data set B, it's pretty highly spread out compared to data set A, where it's clumped around this one spot right there. Not much, not very spread out, but sorta more spread out than data set A. And because it's more spread out, that tells us that, okay, the standard deviation is also going to be higher because Standard deviation, all it's referring to is how spread out the data points are. And because it's more spread out for data set B, we know that the standard deviation is going to be higher for data set B. However, for data set A, because it's not very spread out, it's rather clumped in just one spot. It's not very spread out, which means our standard deviation is also going to be lower as well. Essentially, it's talking about how spread out the data points are, we're also talking about the degree of variation among the data points. And that is the connection you want to learn how to make in order to solve these standard deviation questions. Not much spread, that means your standard deviation is low. If the data points are very spread out, that means your standard deviation is going to be high. If they're spread out evenly, that means their standard deviations are going to be equal to one another's. Make sense? So specifically for the SAT, you want to know two things about standard deviation. First one is the definition, which is what we just went over. And second, you want to understand how graphs work. There are three main types. And before we go straight into the graphs, make sure you have understood all of that, because if you don't understand this, graphs are not going to make sense and it's going to be messy. Give yourself a second and try to understand what just happened. Maybe watch a couple more times, but make sure you get the definitions down before you move on to the graphs. And if you're ready for the graphs, let's talk about the graphs. So it's pretty similar. This is the first type, second type, and the third type. And what you want to understand what to do with these three graphs over here is you want to understand how to estimate the standard deviation based on the shapes of these graphs. And how can we estimate the standard deviation? 
it all goes back to the definition of standard deviation, which is equal to how spread out the data points are. Okay, based on how spread out the data points are, you can estimate what the standard deviation would be. Is it the same? Is it the greater? Or is it going to be less than? Okay, so let's go over these three graphs. And by looking at these graphs, can you tell which one has the highest standard deviation and which one has the lowest standard deviation? Well, let's find out. The first type is going to be looking like this. It's going to be a bell curve. Second type is known as the skewed graph. It's got a little tail at the end. And the third type is known as the double top where it peaks at two separate points. And based on the shapes of the graph, how can we estimate what the standard deviation is? Well, just focus on how spread out the data points are. Here's what I mean by that. If you look at the bell curve, all the data points are just centered around this one piece, which makes it a shape of a bell curve. And because it's centered around this one piece, it's not very spread out. Spread is pretty low, which means our snare deviation is going to be pretty low as well. Okay. What about skewed graph? Well, skewed graph is pretty similar to the bell curve, but it's got a little tail at the end right here. It's kind of centered. It's not very, very spread out, but it's still got a little bit of spread because of this tail portion right here. So our standard deviation is not like very low, but it's not like high either. So it's kind of like in the middle, right? And because the spread is somewhere in the middle, that tells us that standard deviation is going to be somewhere in the middle as well. Now, let's talk about the double top. Double top, dude, these points are everywhere. We have two peaks right there. We have a lot of points right here. And we also have points here, 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 here. The points are not centered in one spot like the bell curve or the skewed curve. Rather, these points have two tops and data points are spread out pretty much everywhere. Okay, that tells us that, okay, our spread is very high. It's not centered in one spot. Our spread is very high, which tells us that our standard deviation is going to be very high as well. Okay, so what you need to understand is for double top, standard deviation is the highest and the skewed and the bell curve is going to be the lowest, okay? First, you want to understand why that's the case. And second, you want to memorize these shapes and their orders so that you can just use them on the SAT without even thinking about it. And that's pretty much all there is to it. As long as you understood the definition of the standard deviation and you understood these graphs, not purely memorize them, but understand how these graphs work, Every single standard deviation question on the SAT, you're going to know how to solve. And now we're going to do about four practice questions that you have seen in the beginning. So if you're ready, we'll move on. But if you need a second, pause the video and make sure you understand these two things. Okay. If you're ready, let's go to the practice questions. So let's go to go over this first question right here. Number 28, which tells us that's going to be a pretty difficult question because it's pretty much toward the end. The 22 students in health class conducted an experiment in which they recorded their pulse rates in beats per minute before and after completing a light exercise routine. The dot plots below display the results. Okay, So we have beats per minute before the exercise and beats per minute after the exercise. Okay, We have a student that's having 88 and a lot of students having at 72. Okay, Each of these dots represent a student. The question says, let S1 and R1 be the standard deviation and range respectively, meaning standard deviation is S1, range is R2, of the data before exercise. And let S2 and R2 be standard deviation, blah, 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 of the exercise, okay? So ones are going to be before and twos are going to be the afters, which the following is true, right? So what's happening is they're comparing standard deviation and the range and range it's pretty simple. Range is just maximum minus minimum, right? So our range is going to be the same for two data sets. Well, let's find out. 88, 56 is going to be 32. And for after, it's going to be 112 minus 80, which is going to be 32 as well. That means the range is going to be the same, which means choice B and C are going to be out. But what about standard deviation? Are standard deviations going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that's for us to find out. 
And as I mentioned before, you don't need to find out the exact value of the standard deviation. All you need to do is estimate what the standard deviation would be. So how do we estimate it? By using the definition, which is talking about how spread out the data points are. Okay. If you look at before, it's in the shape of a bell curve. It's not very spread out. All the data points are pretty much clumped together towards the middle, which means spread is low, which means your standard deviation is also going to be low as well. But what about afterward? It kind of looks like a double top-ish, right? And because it's a double top, it's pretty much like data points are even like spread out everywhere. So our spread is, is very high, which means our standard deviation is very high. So obviously these two data sets are going to have a what? Different standard deviation. So choice A is going to be out, choice D is going to be the answer. Makes sense? You see how easy that question was? It's supposed to be one of the hardest questions on the SAT because it's number 28. But once you know the concept down, once you got the concept down and you know exactly what to look for in the question, the question just becomes so much easier. That's exactly how SAT is. As long as you know what to look for, it becomes that easy. Let's keep going. Next question. So two different data sets are displayed in the dot plot shown below, which of the following statement is going to be true. So we have a set A right there and set two right there. And what are we comparing? Well, it seems like the mean of data set one is less than the mean of data set two and standard deviation. Okay. So mean standard deviation, we're comparing mean and the standard deviation of two sets right here. So mean, you can pretty much calculate on your own, but let's talk about standard deviation of these two things. And all you need to look at are how spread out these data points are. And based on the spread, you can tell whether it's going to be high or it's going to be low. And let's look at data points right here. We see that it's interesting. The data points are pretty much identical. We have three, four, and a lot. Three, four, and a lot. And one, three, four, five, 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 five. So we practically have the same pattern for these two things. The only difference is that they are located in different positions. And we know that the standard deviation is only concerned about how spread out how spread out these data points are. And we see that these data points are spread out the exact same way. Because the spread is exactly the same, we can tell that the standard deviations are also going to be exactly the same for these two data sets. And some of you guys be, might be wondering, but John, these data points are located in different values. Wouldn't that affect the standard deviation as well? Well, the thing about standard deviation is that it doesn't care whether it's in the high numbers or in the low numbers. All it cares about is not the value of the numbers, but how spread out these numbers are. And because we are only focused on the spread of the data points, it really doesn't matter where these data points are located. So we can tell confidently that standard deviation is going to be the same for these two data sets. And when it comes to the mean, what well, mean is referring to the average value. And we know that data set two is made up of bigger numbers than data set one, which means your average is going to be bigger for data set two. So based on that, the answer is going to be mean of data set one is less than, but standard deviation is greater. Nope. Standard deviation is the same. Answer is going to be choice A. Let's go to the next question. So this was a little different rather than giving you a graph that looks something like that, it just gives you a ugly looking table right here. And how are we supposed to find out standard deviation based on this table? Well, let's keep going. So the table below gives distribution of high temperatures and degrees Fahrenheit for city A and city B for the same 21 days in March. Okay. Instead of giving us nice little graphs, it's giving us ugly tables. And based on that, which of the following is true about the data shown in 21 days? Right? And we're talking about standard deviation, 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 and deviation. And it's going to be larger, smaller, are they going to be the same, or these cannot be calculated with data provided, which is usually never the answer. So when you are given a graph like that, you can easily tell, or you can easily estimate what the standard deviation would be. All you have to look at is how spread out these data points are, right? It's pretty simple. But when you're given this table and you're not given a graph, how are you supposed to estimate it, right? Well, if you need a graph, just graph it out. So 
I'm gonna graph out this data, ta data table right here. We have 76, 7, 8, 9, 80, okay? Right there. And we have 1, 1, 2, 14, 3. 1, 1, 2, and 14, 1, 2, 3, okay? So looks something like that. Somewhat bell curve, somewhat skewed-ish, but let's go to the second one. So that's city A. City B is going to be looking like same thing, 76, 7, 8, 9, 80. And we have 6, 4, 2, 3, 6. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 4, 2, 3, and 6. Okay. So based on that, our graph kind of looks like that. And see how it works out? That's, let's just call it like skewed here. And that's going to be a double top, right? And based on what we have learned, double top is spread out very highly, which means, which means your standard deviation is also going to be very high. But for the skewed curve, not very spread out. So your standard deviation is going to be eh, not very high either. So we know that in, in terms of standard deviation, B is going to be greater than A because data points in B are more spread out. And the choice that says that is going to be, well, let's look at A. Standard deviation of temperatures in A is larger. A is larger. No, that's not true. Deviation in B is larger. B is larger. That's true. They are going to be the same. Not true. Make sense? So when they just give you a table and you need a graph, just graph it out. It makes your life a lot easier. So in summary, when it comes to standard deviation, two things you need to know. First is the definition, which is talking about the spread of the data points. High spread, meaning there's a high standard deviation. And you also want to understand how standard deviation works based on the shapes of the data points. There's the bell curve, there's the skewed curve, and there's also a double top. So as long as you understood these two things right here, every single standard deviation question on the SAT is going to be very, very easy. So if you found this video helpful, give a thumbs up. If you guys have any questions or comments, leave it in the comment section down below, and I'll see you on the next video.